you saw that, didn't you? Didn't you? Do you think anyone will believe us? There were four films in the Marple series starting in 1961 with Murder, She Said, which was based on the 450 from Paddington. A couple of years later, in 1963, they released Murder at the Gallop, which was based on After the Funeral. And then a year later, Murder Most Foul, based on Mrs McGinty's Dead. The same year, though, they also released Murder Ahoy, the fourth and final in the series, which actually wasn't based on any Agatha Christie story at all. Apart from Margaret Rutherford, there were two actors who were regulars in each of the four films. First was Charles Tingwell, who played Inspector Craddock. Miraculously, in every story, Miss Marple would identify a crime, the inspector would absolutely not believe her that anything was happening, forcing her to go and investigate on her own. She was helped and supported by Jim Stringer, Mr Stringer, who in fact was played by Stringer Davis, who was Margaret Rutherford's real-life husband. A woman has been strangled. I saw it. Strangled? Yes, strangled. Madam, don't you think perhaps you had a little nap and maybe had a bad dream? Young man, I was not dreaming. I saw it. The first in the series was Murder, She Said, released in 1961. It's based on the Agatha Christie story, The 450, from Paddington. Miss Marple is travelling on a train and sees a woman being strangled on another train as it's passing by. She reports this to the ticket inspector and later to the police, but nobody believes her. So, armed with Mr Stringer, she sets off to investigate the case herself. Well, if they won't believe us, we'll just have to go and solve this crime ourselves, won't we? Suspicious that the body may have been thrown from the train, which is why nothing was found, she looks along the track with Mr Stringer to try and find out where it may have been pushed out of the train. They find themselves at Ackenthorpe Hall, and that's where she joins the staff as a, as a maid to try and investigate the crime from the inside. And she meets people like James Robertson Justice, playing Mr Ackenthorpe. The household is managed by Muriel Pavlov, who plays Emma Ackenthorpe, and the evil Dr Quimper is played by Arthur Kennedy. And there's an interesting appearance from Joan Hickson as Mrs Kidder, the long-suffering housekeeper who's not prepared to stay at Ackenthorpe Hall after dark. The indomitable Miss Marple. The inimitable Agatha Christie. An incomparable combination that signposts murder. Murder at the gallery. Although Agatha Christie was not a fan of murder, she said, she didn't think it was a particularly good portrayal of Miss Marple, the film was a success. And that led to the second in the series being produced two years later in 1963. That was Murder at the Gallop, based on After the Funeral. Miss Marple and Mr Stringer are out collecting money for charity, and they knock on the door of Mr Enderby's house and discover that he's been murdered. Miss Marple and Mr Stringer stand up at the window of the solicitor's office and listen in to the reading of the will which is when it's claimed that actually Mr Enderby was in fact murdered. When the police decide they're not going to do anything about her allegations, understandably, yet again, Miss Marple decides she's going to go off and investigate the crime herself. Robert Morley plays the exaggerated and over-exuberant owner of the riding school, Hector Enderby. Dame Flora Robson turns up as Miss Milcrest. The cast includes a good cross-section of British actors and actresses, including Katia Douglas, James Villers and Finlay Curry. The following year, riding on the success of Murder at the Gallop, comes the third in the series, Murder Most Foul, based on Agatha Christie's story, Mrs McGinty's Dead. Margaret Rutherford, again as Miss Marple, is a juror in a murder trial, and the jury, it seems, can't reach a conclusion. Well, 11 of them can, but one can't, that one being Agatha Christie's Miss Marple. Surprise, surprise. So the whole case falls apart and the police have to investigate all over again. Marple's suspicions about who the murderer really is are not believed by the police. Surprise, surprise. And so she's forced to take on the case herself. She joins a travelling theatre rep company and as an aspiring ageing actress, she comes to investigate the crime and dig under the secrets of Murder Most Foul. The theatre company is led by H. Driffold Cosgood, played by the astonishing Ron Moody. Some wonderful cameo roles include Andrew Cruikshank as Justice Crosby. And right at the start of the film, we see Terry Scott as Police Constable Wells, who's really frustrated that Miss Marple has gone and ruined his first murder. 
Also in 1964 comes Murder Ahoy, which is the fourth and final in the film series. It wasn't based on any Agatha Christie story whatsoever and was a completely original screenplay. Well, you look at it. Reaper, jacket, brass, buttons, tree corn, hat. Oh, gosh, you think she is. Neptune's mother. Welcome aboard, marvellous Margaret Rutherford. We see Miss Marple as a trustee for the training ship Battledor, a seagoing training ship that's meant to put backbone into young tearaways. At her first meeting of trustees, one of the other trustees, anxious to communicate some really impressive and devastating news to the trustees, suspiciously dies instantly, the victim of poisoned snuff. Convinced it's murder, having done some investigation on a few crumbs of snuff that are left over, but the police remarkably choose not to believe her this time round yet again, so here she is having to go in and investigate the crime herself. She takes herself off to the battle door down in Cornwall with the intention of just inspecting the ship for a day or two, but ends up staying a little bit longer so that she can investigate the crime yet again from within. The captain of the battle door is Sidney de Courcy Rumstone, played wonderfully by Lionel Jeffries. He's in command, but he's also frustrated. He's a real traditionalist, so it would seem, and anxious to get the investigation done and out of the way as quickly as possible. The cast also includes William Mervyn as Commander Breeze Connington. Joan Benham plays matron Alice Fanbraid, who's secretly having a relationship with Captain Sidney de Courcy Rumstone. Nicholas Parsons pops in and out very quickly as Dr Crump, quickly in to make his medical investigation and straight out again. There's a baby due, can't stop. Derek Nimmo is Sub-Lieutenant Eric Humbert and Gerald Cross is Brewer, also known as Lieutenant Commander Dimchurch. In all the four Miss Marple movies starring Margaret Rutherford, that's Murder She Said, Murder at the Gallop, Murder Most Foul and Murder Ahoy are a wonderfully whimsical, eccentric set of films. Miss Marple's portrayal of the character is absolutely distinctive. Yes, it's somewhat different to modern portrayals and Agatha Christie herself wasn't altogether sold on Margaret Rutherford playing the part. But there are a great set of films that are from a bygone age in the 1960s that are reminiscent of an older age but verging on the introduction of new thoughts, new ideas and a more modern time. I think there are a great set of films that are very entertaining, absolutely enthralling, wonderful entertainment, there's a lot of humour as well as a lot of drama and tension thrown in. Great stories, well presented on screen, three of them adapted from Agatha Christie stories and I think Murder Ahoy, even though not from a Christie story, somehow for me stands out as a little bit more enjoyable, mainly because it's perhaps a different story you haven't seen in quite so many ways in other places. They're warm-hearted, they're entertaining, they're a little bit thrilling, quite funny, but altogether totally enjoyable, absolutely well worth a view. Ask them. They saw it happen. What did I tell you? Nobody is going to believe us. Even my friend Mr. Stringer will have his doubts. And as for the police, well, they are positively insulting. I assure you, Miss Marple, that a woman cannot be murdered on a busy train a few minutes before a station without our finding out about it. I'm quite sure you mean well, Inspector. But if you imagine that I am going to sit back and let everybody regard me as a dotty old maid, you are very much mistaken.